Hi there, welcome to my channel. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about a non-linear data structure which is known as graph. In this video, we are going to explore different types of graphs and we'll be also seeing how we can represent the graph using matrix. Uh, matrix are basically helpful whenever we are going to write down the code for graphics algorithms or whenever we are going to solve some mathematical problems of graph. So let's just begin. So first of all, let's just understand what is a graph. Graph is a nonlinear data structure having nodes and vertices and set of edges. Now I'll let you know what is a node or a vertex and what is an edge. So these are the different points. A, B, C, D. These are the scattered points. These are known as nodes. We, we also call them as vertices. If I have a single point, I'll call it as a vertex. If I have more than one point, I call it as a vertices. Okay. So now when there is a line which is connecting all these points, these are, these are known as edges. There is a line from A to B. So that means if I want to traverse from A to B, I can do that with the help of this edge, with the help of this line. So in technical terms, we call this line as an edge and these points as vertices or nodes. Okay, now let's just have a mathematical definition of a graph. Graph can be defined as set of vertices and edges. V stands for set of vertices and E stands for set of edges. So we represent the set of vertices. For example, in this graph, if I'll talk about this graph, I have A, B, C, D. These are my vertices. These are my points. And E represent the set of edges. So that means from A to B, there is an edge, yes. From B to C, there is an edge, yes. From C to D and from D to A. So these are my set of vertices. Suppose if there is a diagonal element from A to C, then that will also be counted as a set of edge. Okay. Now let's just have a look at the types of graph. First of all, we can we can describe graphs into two forms that is directed and one is undirected. Now directed itself, its name itself is explaining that directed means if I have a direction from where I'm starting and to which point I'm going. See, as we have seen in this graph that what we have said that an edge is a line which is connecting two different points. Okay, now this is a line which is connecting A and B. Now see, since there is no direction, so I don't know whether I can traverse from A to B or from B to A, right? So that means I can traverse in both the directions. I have path in both the directions, okay? But in case of directed graph, we are going to have specific directions, okay? Now, if there is a direction from A to B, this describes that I can only traverse from A to B. But if I, if I want to traverse from B to A, I don't have any edge or any path or any line. So I cannot do that, right? So this is your directed graph. When directions are going to be there in my graph, okay? Similarly, I have an edge from D to B, but if I want to traverse from B to D, no, I can't do that. Similarly, from D to C, yes, there is a path, okay? And from D to A, yes, there is a path. So suppose if I want to travel from A to D, I can't do that because directly there is no edge and indirect also there is no edge. I can traverse from A to B, but from B to D, there is no path. Okay, so A to D, there is no defined path, but from D to A, we do have a path. Okay. So this is your directed graph when directions are going to be there in your graph. Another one is your undirected graph when there are no direction. So that means if I want to travel from A to D, I can do that and vice versa is also true. Since directions are not given, so I am assuming that I have path in both the directions. So the next one is that is known as weighted graph. Now weighted graph, this can be a directed graph, this can be undirect, this can be an undirected graph. Why we are saying that? Because see, whenever there is a path, there is going, if if that path is having some cost, we call it as a weighted graph, okay? Suppose if A to B, there is a path, if this path will carry some cost, I can say this is a weighted graph. So, weighted graph could be for directed graph or it could be for undirected graph, okay? Now, whenever I am saying weighted directed graph, so that means each edge is going to have some weight plus each edge is going to have some direction, okay? From A to B, yes, I do have a path and the cost of path is 5. From D to B, I do have a path and the cost of path is 3. Similarly, for the rest of the vertices. How we are going to define this? We will define with the help of a table. Vertex from A to A, there is no path, no edge, so no cost. Cost is going to be 0. 
from a to b there is a path and the cost of the path is 5 so we'll write 5 from d to b the cost of path is 3 so we'll write 3 and similarly from d to c the cost of path is 1 from d to a the cost of path is 2 okay so this is my weighted directed graph okay similarly we can also have an undirected graph and weights could be attached to that graph also in that case what will happen if there is a path from a to b there is we are also assuming that there must be a path from b to a so whenever you are going to write down the cost from a to b that is going to be 5 plus if you write down the cost from b to a that is also going to be 5 because directions are not there okay so next we are going to discuss how we can represent this directed graph in the form of matrix okay so first of all try to understand one thing whenever i am saying i am going to represent my graph in the form of matrix so my matrix is going to be an adjacency matrix now what is an adjacency matrix a matrix which is having equal number of rows and columns this matrix is always going to be a square matrix okay what is a square matrix matrix having same number of rows and columns okay now the question comes that how many number of rows or columns so that depends upon the number of vertices in my graph i am having six vertices so i am going to have six number of rows and six number of columns in my graph matrix is going to have row number as a b c d e f and column number also as a b c d e f now what we are going to fill in these cells from A to A, there is no path, there is no edge, so I'll write 0. From A to B, there is a path, and what is the cost of the path? That is 7, so we'll write 7. From A to C, there is a path, what is the cost of the path? That is going to be 4. From A to D, there is no direct path, so I'll write 0. From A to E, there is no direct path, I'll write 0. From A to F, there is no direct path, I'll write 0. We are going to use actually this representation whenever we are going to calculate the uh, cost from one particular vertex, vertex to all the other vertices of my graph that, that are also termed as minimum cost algorithms. Okay. Now, when I'll, I'll come to the vertex B, from B, I have only one connection that is towards F. That means what I want to say is from B, I can move to F, but to the remaining vertices, I cannot go. Okay, they are coming towards B, but B is not going towards the other vertices. B is only going towards F. This is also known as outward edge. Inward says uh, all the all the edges that are coming towards a vertex, like this is an inward edge. C is coming towards B. A is coming towards B. But what is an outward edge? An edge that is going from that vertex. For example, this. This is an edge that is going from uh, B to F. Okay. So, from B to F, there is a cost that is 3. I'll write 3 and there is no other outward edge. For, so, for the rest of vertices, entry is going to be 0. Now, you have to notice one thing that, okay, from A to B, the cost of path was 7. But from B to A, it is 0. Why? Because this is a directed graph. From B to A, there is no path. So, I'll write down 0. Okay. Next, coming on the next vertex, that is C. From C, there is there are two outward edges. One is towards D and one is towards B. Okay. So I'll write from C to B. The cost is three. This is an outward edge of C, and this is also an outward edge of C. That is from C to D. The cost is two. The rest, there is no other outward edge. So I'll write zero for the rest of the vertices. Similarly, from D, D, D is having only one outward edge. That is towards E. The cost of D to E is two rest there is no outward edge so we are going to write zero okay next is the vertex e from e we have only one outward edge that is towards f what is the cost of e to f that is four rest there is no outward edge so we are going to write a zero similarly for f there is no outward edge f is having no outward edge only two edges are coming towards f that means inward edges so the cost is going to be zero for every single vertex okay I hope you have understood how we can represent graphs, weighted graph in the form of matrix because we are going to use this representation while calculating the minimum cost. Okay, And we do have two to three uh, minimum cost algorithm which we are going to discuss in our next videos. I hope you like the video and if you do like the video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and please don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. Bye-bye.